quick overview of storage um, over the years in PCs. Um, when I was uh, first getting into computers, we had five inch drives, five inch floppy drives. Okay, they're you know about that that big, maybe a little bit bigger. You slide them in, you boot to them. Um, it would load the OS in the memory, and then if you wanted to run an app like WordPerfect, you'd pull that disk out, put a new one in, and then um, run the application. It was really slow compared to now. Like you would not want to try it now uh, if you wanted to get anything done. If you just want nostalgia, then yeah, it's it's neat. Um, but yeah, it would take a while just to load an app. Thankfully, the apps didn't take much memory. But also memory, we didn't have much of that either, like 640K uh, instead of many gigabytes we have now. Um, so that's that. Uh, we eventually got uh, what's called zip disks and, and jazz drives, um, zip drives and jazz drives. Now, the, the zip drives can initially could hold 100 meg uh, of data rather than it'd be about little less than 100 floppy disks, okay? Um, well, more like 80, I think. Um, but it was huge. It was a huge innovation. The problem with those, <laughs> one of the main problems with those is um, they required an interface on your computer for them to work. And then they also required, um, or they also failed often. Like you, we called it the click of death. Okay. We got different terms for click of death now, but then click of death was associated with jet, uh, zip disks. Uh, basically what happened is you put the disk in, the drive would try to spin up and there would be a mechanical failure and it would destroy the disk. And in the drive, mechanical failure on the drive was permanent. Um, so pretty much any disk you put in after that click of death happened, the drive would be destroyed. The disk would be destroyed. Uh, I went through quite a few of those, probably three or four of them before I gave up and I got a jazz drive, which was, uh, one gigabyte storage. Um, and it was a pretty big deal. Um, they didn't have the same problems, but, uh, they didn't really catch on. So if you had a drive, um, you couldn't take the disc over to your friend's house and run it. Uh, the zip disc caught on for a while, but, uh, the mechanical problems on them just it killed it killed the business. I think it were I Omega um, was to brand on them. Uh, I think there was a class action suit on those, and I think I ended up getting I didn't even get anywhere my money back on them. It's a shame, but it, at least I got something. I think it's quite a while ago. I don't remember exactly. I, there was quite a few class action suits at that time that I was collecting. Um, so yeah, that that's that's that as far as I think they ran on parallel port too. And I don't I doubt many here that might be watching this would know what a parallel port is. <laughs> um yeah. Um around when in that time period we were also using IDE drives and the IDE connection was about yay wide and I believe it had 44 pins in it. I don't remember off the top of my head, but um, maybe it's 22. At any rate, they, they were about this wide. Um, so you'd plug that into your laptop uh, hard drive and then the other side into the motherboard and you could daisy chain two hard drives on that. So you can have a total of four drives in a PC without adding any add-on cards. Um, so you had that big cable, but then you also had a four pin connection for power. Um, you still see those like on power supplies and stuff because a lot of fans still use them. Um, and there's some uh, quite a bit of legacy equipment out there that uses them. Uh, but it's not at that often anymore. And those speeds ranged from um, 33 to 133 megas a second, depending on which version you had on your motherboard um, and your hard drive. Um, so obviously... Um, they called it ATA. Um, 33 came out, uh, and it was huge compared to the previous uh, previous speeds. And then the 66 came out again. It was pretty huge. And then the 133 came out, and everyone was like, "Meh," because SATA came out not too long later. Uh, 
So, um, but yeah, uh, on the IDE drives, you put two of them on there and then it would be a, a jumper. It said uh, master or slave drive and the master drive, you, you had to get them in the right order. Okay. Um, later we had an option called cable select and it was just a little jumper that you switched between master slave or cable select and the cable select option would automatically determine, um, which drive would be the master and slave based on where it was plugged into the cable. It's a huge innovation there. Um, it saved me a lot of time because as a PC builder at the time, um, if you had two drives in there. It, it, you were bound to screw it up once in a while. And if you had four drives in there, you were going to screw it up at least once, probably in the PC build. Luckily, most most systems at the time just had one drive because they were expensive and uh, for the time. Um, so, yeah, in that the the big difference in speed, is, especially after you go to sixty six to one thirty three, the big difference was. Um, Access time. Access time is still a huge deal today. Uh, we don't notice it as much because we got solid states, but in mechanical drives, access time is the king of all other interface, other options on a hard drive. Um, in the access time, basically, there's a in mechanical drives, there's a spinning disk. Um, today, there's multiple platters, you so you got multiple disks in there, um, but then you usually just had one, sometimes two. Uh, and if you imagine a record player, as it spins, as farther you go out, the more of the song you hear, okay, and the more of the album. Now, on hard drives, there's that needle and it spins, but if one piece of data is here in the inside, the access time to that file is quick, and then you go out to the outside, the access time is slow. And so the disk is spinning and the needle is going back and forth looking for the data. Um, now, uh, the spin rate is a huge deal as far as access time. Um, I think we had, I think we had thirty three thousand RPM, fifty four and uh, seventy two hundred, um, going through the different generations. Uh, so the faster it can pick up that that piece of data, the faster the access time, the faster it can load the, locate the file to load it. Because if it takes a long time to load the file or find the file, it's not going to be able, the bandwidth, the throughput on the interface doesn't really matter if it if it takes forever to find the file. And those files are you know almost always relatively small. So you know when you're sending a one megabyte file through a thirty three meg connection, it's not going to go any faster uh, on a one on a sixty six throughput because you know it's under that threshold you know now if you're loading a a 40 meg file on on a uh 33 meg connection a 66 would be faster because it'd still load that in one second whereas a 33 it would take a little bit longer than one second because it has to go through that bandwidth or that throughput so um the access time was king and there wasn't a lot of 40 meg files um at that time so access time was the key um Unless you were for consumers, if you were a more power user, you wanted larger uh, throughput on that. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Uh, not long after the SATA 100 or 133, I don't recall, um, we, or after the IDE, uh, we got SATA drives and SATA interfaces. Um, I have an old mechanical drive here somewhere. There, nope, there it is. Um, okay, so here's a Western Digital. This one's from 2012. I couldn't find any earlier ones, but the connections are still the same. You have the little, this one's the data, which if you take it from this side to this size is huge. And uh, this one's to power. Um, the connection for it's a little larger, so pulling it through different grommets which we really didn't have but trying to do cable management on it that end was kind of hard to get through but you could and you could see um you could see the jumpers here these were similar to the ones we saw on uh 
IDE drives for Master and Slave and Cable Select. So I don't think it tells you what they are here. But it does somewhere. So yeah, and this is a 256 gig drive uh, from 2012 or 250 gig. Now the ID, the uh, laptop drives, three inch drives, they had the same, generally had the same connections. Unlike IDE drives in laptops, they often had a, a custom. Um, I don't have one here. I don't think it's this one. That one's a, a SATA as well, but they often had a, a different interface because the it just wouldn't work in a laptop um yeah so that one's that that was SATA one um had a speed of 150 megasecond which wasn't a huge increase over the um ata ide connection um but the cable length and width were huge. On the IDE drive, power users who were doing a lot of overclocking um, needed more airflow to keep their PCs cool um, because things got really hot back then. Um, so what we would do is we take the, I, the wide IDE cables and in between each um, pinout or on the cable, because it had 44 or 24 um, cables running down from the motherboard to the laptop we would slice in between those using a razor edge and then use tape or heat shrink or whatever to bind those together um so you would take this wide down to around around that big um so the cable management look generally looked better unless you um ghettoed the the wrapping and then um making the airflow much easier to manage with SATA, we didn't need to worry about that because the um, cable was already flat and small. We didn't, it was so much better. So that's where SATA 150, SATA uh, 1 150 came around. It was really nice. Um, and the S stands for serial, um, serial ATA. Um, so yeah, that that was a, the huge difference. And the one the 150 megasecond, it was nice, but didn't make much difference on mechanical drives. Um, SATA 2 came out, and it was pretty huge. It went up to 300 megasecond. And this is where things really took a jump as far as storage goes, um, because we started getting, really started getting uh, uh, SSD, solid state drives. And... My second drive, my first one was a OCE, OCZ Agility 2, which was 60 gigs, and it was the size of this. Um, my second drive, I actually bought this second hand. I believe this came out in 2005, and it's, I mean, you see a size, whoops. You can see the size difference here, you know. And this is a Vertex 2, which I believe was SATA, SATA 2. Yeah, SATA, 120 gig SATA 2. And this would get allow me to get up to 300 megasecond um, if I had a SATA 2 port, and I, I did. So, yeah, this would get... This is an older drive, and it didn't have... the ver, This Vertex didn't couldn't saturate that, um, but it got close. Um, I think it got me like 200 megasecond. My OCZ Agility 3, which was this size with the same connections um, got me I think it, it was faster than this um, and it took up much less space um, now these ones same deal I believe this were initially put together mostly for laptops um, because you can't put this into a laptop I mean you just don't have the size the space so you had these um, and they were really expensive, really expensive for the time. Um, I believe they cost almost as much as a full consumer computer at the time. So, except for a Mac. Um, so if you had one, you, you had money. Um, I didn't have money. I ended up ditching uh, other necessities to get a 60 gig one. 
Um, so yeah, I would show you that one, but I got actually still use it in a different system. Yeah, that's how good these OC uh, Z drives were. Um, now OCZ was the company to go through at the time. Um, there were other companies, but OCZ was the best um, as far as speed goes. Um, so, yeah, and the huge, the huge difference. I mean, the the one fifty megasecond wasn't a huge upgrade. The access time was the huge upgrade on the solid states because the access time is almost nothing, right? So, if you were loading a one meg file um, from a mechanical drive, if that file was farther out on the platter, then it would take a long time to get. Well, this, it doesn't matter. There is no mechanical spinning or anything like that in these. It just goes, it has like a little index on the drive. It looks at that index to see where the file is. And then it just pulls that file. So the, the access time is almost nothing. So if this is a, uh, we'll just say 150 megasecond and you're loading a crap ton of one meg files, this is going to be so much faster than a mechanical drive. And people today still mistake that. Um, a 150 meg solid state isn't going to be much worse than a uh, 600 meg solid state, um, unless you're loading larger files, which is common today, but before, it was not so access time access time access time it's in memory and in hard drives solid state drives that's where it's at um if you're com if you're comparing between two drives look at the access time pick the one that's lower okay lower access time is faster so yeah that's that um so that was solid states and we got sata 3 um, which was 600 megasecond. Again, access time is king, but if you're copying large files, 600 megasecond is huge. Um, I mean, if you're copying 600 one meg files, uh, well, you're still going to have some, well, we won't go there, but if you're, if you're copying one, uh, a one gigabyte file over uh, a 1.5 megasecond. If you had, if you were able to take advantage of all that, then it would load in what 700 or seven seconds, something like that. But if you're copying that uh, gigabit file over one uh, SATA three, then it would take two seconds. If it's in the same conditions, okay. So SATA three is a huge jump, okay. Um, and we we've had these for a long time, USB drives. This is a uh, Seagate I got in 2012. Yes, it still works. I am amazed. Uh, I use these for backups on my NAS. Um, that's another story. But um, yeah, there's just. The, the problem with these these ones, especially these older ones, is the USB uh, connection is that connection. I can't remember what it's called, but it's horrible um, because it's it's not really proprietary, but finding one of these is less common, especially nowadays. So um, I'm going to have to replace these sooner than later with a more standard USB-C connection. Um, so, but yeah, it still works. And you, this is it has a mechanical drive in there. So even with USB one, um, the speed was still fine. Nowadays you got solid state external drives, and that's a different story. I'm not going to get into. Uh, okay, so there's that. And now, probably 2015 ish, we started really, really started seeing M.2. Connections now. I just have my newer NVMe drive here. I don't can't find my older M.2, but the the basic idea is the same. The there's this key that plugs right into the motherboard, so you don't need any cables um, running through your case. So the airflow 
was so much better and you don't need this giant comparatively speaking this giant hard drive um in your system taking up a lot of space so you'd put one of these directly on the motherboard usually um and it would save so much space so much cable um uh, it was great and they made them in about this size this size this size that i got here and then probably about that about another half an inch farther out um and depending on the time the technology it, the storage on them would be a, a little different um and those those ones just use normal sata interface except for it used a key um they call these connections a key and there's multiple different versions of them there's one that has like a little notch up here and i think there's one that has a notch farther up um they they got them names like b key m key um and all that sort of thing um the wonderful th well with the sata um it, it was just nice i mean no cables flat on the motherboard usually um so the airflow would not be impeded at all um so if you're doing any overclocking or anything even if it was just a sata sata connection sata 3 connection you wanted one of these um for for your solid state um they were really expensive though now uh, around 2016 17ish we started getting nvme drives um and what nvme drives do they have this it's almost always this connection okay this uh this this type of key and what they did is instead of using the sata interface they would connect it directly to the pci lanes um which throughput wise that was amazing like um i think this one would go i think it's rated up to um up to three meg three gig a second okay compared to 600 and 300 that is huge right huge throughput if you're copying large files you had to have one of these to be you didn't have to but if you were a power user you had to have one of these okay um if you're doing uh video editing uh anything like that you wanted one of these um and these i, I think this one goes through a pcie um three interface and uh the three gigabit per second is what these can the pcie interface can do so um for one lane um so yeah this one's 500 meg um i do have um uh, a sata one in my other pc from 2012 and nope nope i'm lying that's a that's a three and a half inch one um but this was the second one i got and the other one was a sata one um and again the sata was no faster really but um it was a little bit faster but it wasn't worth mentioning um but again the airflow and space in the in the case is the huge the huge advantage of these now i don't i do have one but it's in this pc i'm using right now it's an NVMe 4, PCIe 4 drive. Um, what does that mean? Well, there's a new PCIe version, uh, PCIe 4, imagine that, whereas these were PCIe 3, and the PCIe 4 is faster per lane, right? Um, and uh, the speeds on those, I believe, can go up to 8 eight gigabit a second i haven't seen one that goes that close yet personally in in the real world mine um goes between um 6.5 gig and 7 gig i believe i haven't tested it in a while um so yeah that's that's it they're, they're huge it's a huge difference in throughput it's not a huge difference in access time it's like almost no difference depending on the drive um, and the quality, but it, the, the access time is almost no different, which means this drive for small files 
it's not going to be much slower than this drive for small files because the access time is slow or fast, but the time is lower. Uh, the access time is almost the same. Okay. Okay. That's a bad comparison. Um, but the speed difference in the real world <laughs> would not make much difference. Um, like web browsing and processing email, that sort of thing. These won't make much difference. If you're copying large files, this one is much faster than this. But just booting smaller files, MP3s, you know, um, not a huge difference. Not a huge difference to pay the premium for. Um, but now nowadays, the uh, three and a half inch and the NVMEs, the price difference um, isn't all that much. Um, if you're looking to save a few bucks, you go with this one. Uh, it's hard to find new computers with a three inch for boot nowadays. But um, if you're wanting to save a few bucks, you could probably get one of these and skimp on these if you're an everyday consumer, web browsing, email, that sort of thing. Um, if you're anything more than the consumer, then you want to go with an NVMe. Um, that's pretty much the evolution of hard drives. Uh, quick and dirty. That's how I like to do things. Um, you don't need to get too deep into it. You just need the basics. Um, USB drives now, they have often have solid states in them. And sometimes these uh, NVMEs that go through the USB-C interface, which is amazing. Um, you can, I haven't done it yet, but you can boot from a USB-C external with one of these in it, and it'll be the boot and everyday usage will be about the same as if you had one connected to the motherboard. Because USB-C um, 3.2, the bandwidth in that is, would easily keep up with this. However, if you had multiple USB de USB devices on that, it would slow it down a little bit. So, yeah, internal drives really aren't even needed anymore. You can just build a base system, and assuming the specs are the same, you could take that USB drive and use it the same anywhere on the on your network. So you didn't have to use different drivers and stuff if they were all the same. So it's pretty amazing. Uh I'm actually thinking about doing that um, because I use multiple computers at work, um, mostly my Mac, but I use a lot of different Dells and that sort of thing. And I currently use a boot drive to do utility work on, but I thought about using it for my main OS as a test um, just to see how it'll work out. Maybe we could save some money, like you know, use fake thin clients on a lot of computers um, without having to use up the network. But the idea behind that is cool, but actually doing it probably is counterproductive <laughs> uh, as far as saving money. Um, at any rate, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's a basic overview of the different connections and speeds of uh, storage from the 90s to now um, without going too deep into it. The big thing to remember is access time. If you're looking at two different drives, Let's say, um, or if you're looking through multiple drives, say we got a three and a half inch SATA three solid state. Uh, we have a mechanical SATA three drive, and we have an NVMe drive. You look at your use your usage for it. If you're going to be a consumer um, or power user, and then look at the access time. Guaranteed, the access times are faster on the solid states. There is no doubt, no way it's going to be slower than the mechanical. However, if you don't need that fast speed on your uh, on your system, or if you're using it to store like MP3 files, which don't have to go fast, um, then you use a mechanical drive. Um, before I built this computer, all these videos I would record for other things. I would store in mechanical drive because I didn't need it to go fast. Okay. Now I don't have any mechanical drives in my system anymore, but that's what I would do. Um, and then I'd use a solid state for my boot drive, my OSs, my browser, my games, 
that sort of thing that I'd want to load faster. Yeah, that's it. Um, access time, access time, access time over bandwidth. Um, yeah, pretty much. That's that's the end. So yeah, if you if you like this, um, go ahead and do the like, subscribe, notification bell, and comment. It feeds the algorithm, so more people will be suggested. This um, it really doesn't matter because I'm not going to be a huge YouTuber. Never plan to be. So um, yeah, still be nice to hear from you. Uh, yeah. Any other questions or any other videos you think it might be helpful, let me know.